Okay, so page two of section 4.2. Uh, this is a table and a table like this is called it, the hypothetical thousand table. All right, and so we start with a, a group of thousand fictitious people. We we pretend like the, the pretend that these thousand people do exist, and we assume that two percent of the population are infected with a certain virus. Uh, the test is ninety percent accurate, and that means ten percent of the uh, results will be the opposite. You know, if um, if um, if somebody is infected, then ten percent of the results will be saying that they are negative and so on and vice versa. Uh, if a test, uh, so the question is this, if you tested positive on this, how likely is it that you are infected? Is that 90% accurate? Well, let's see. Uh, the answer is surprising. And that's one of the reasons I am presenting this as an important question that you will need to be able to do both for your homework and on your exam. You ready? How likely is it that you are infected? Start with a big fixed number, a thousand. All right, and so in order to explain everything here, I'm going to just label each of these boxes, A, B, C, D, E, F, not, uh, we are not going to do this in this order, uh, but this is how we can identify these boxes here. Okay, so out of a thousand, let's say, uh, according to the problem, 2% of the people are actually infected with a virus. So 2% of a thousand. Uh, is what? 20 people, right? So 20 people, that number should go to C. Now, why is that? Because that's a total number of infected people, actually infected people in the group of 1,000, all right? So now you can do 1,000 minus two, uh, 20, and that's 980. And this is, of course, F, right? Because that's the number of people who are actually not infected with this virus. You can also consider this to be, you know, the 98% uh, of the 1,000 people. That would give you the same number. All right. So now let's look at this many people, 20 people who are actually infected. And 90% of the 20 infected people will test positive because they are infected and the test is 90% accurate, right? So what is 90% of 20 people? 20 times 0.9, which is 18, all right? Remember, we uh, did a problem many problems like this in chapter two. So this 18 goes to which box? Those are the ones who do have the infection and they have tested. So that will go to A. Now the remaining people, that's 20 minus 18, that's two people will go to B. These are the people who are actually infected but they tested negative. Okay, now this is called the uh, false negative. They tested negative, but they shouldn't have been. They shouldn't have. Okay? And that's because they are actually infected with the virus. Now, this is actually a serious problem, right? Because these two people thinking that they are not infected will go about doing their business and uh, doing their daily routine, probably spreading the virus to the society. Okay, so um, by no means I am uh, going to minimize the danger that these two people would create. But you know, our life is not perfect, and our tests are not perfect. So sometimes this happens. Okay, but a more serious problem will come later in this scenario. Okay, so out of the 980 non-infected people, 90% of them will test negative, okay? Do um, you understand why this is true? Yeah, because this test is 90% accurate and we have 90, uh, sorry, 980 non-infected people and 90 of them will correctly test negative. And so 980 times nine is equal to 882. Do you see which box this number goes to? These are the people who are not infected and test negative. So that's 882 here in E. 
All right, so that means the rest of them, which is 980 minus 882, not surprisingly, this number is 98, because that is, of course, the remaining 10% of uh, 980. Okay, these are the people who will erroneously test positive. So these are called false positives. Okay, and how many of them are there? Uh, 98, and that would go to box D. And that's because these are the people, 10% of the non-infected people, a group of 980 people, 10%, 98 will test positive because this test is only 90% accurate. All right, G and H are simple. All you have to do here is G is uh, 18, plus 98, which is 116, and H is the sum of two false negatives and 882 true negatives, and that would be uh, 884. Let's go ahead and enter these numbers in the chart. Uh, 116 here and 884. All right, one thing I should mention here, remember the sum of this and this is a thousand, right? That's a total of infected and non-infected people. Uh, once you do this calculate these calculations, this number plus this number should equal a thousand, okay? So make sure you add up these two numbers to, for verification and you get a thousand, all right? The same number should be the total this way and that way. And that is how you fill out uh, a table like this. This is again called a uh, hypothetical thousand table. And this is much easier than using uh, complicated formula involving uh, conditional probabilities. All right, so now let's answer the question here. The, the, the final question was how likely is it? What is the probability that you are actually infected given that you test positive? See, testing positive sounds like you are automatically infected, right? But with a uh, test as good as 90% accurate, take a look at this. Out of 116 people who test positive, only 18 of them are really infected. All right, so what do we mean by this? Here's what I was, I'm saying here. The probability that you are indeed infected, oops, given that you test positive, all right, so remember the question is, what happens if you test positive? Given that you test positive, what is the probability that you are actually infected? The answer is 18. Those are the number of people who are, this is the number of people who are infected and tested positive, divided by the number, the total number of people who test positive, which was 116. And guess what? This number is 0.1551, approximately, 15.1%. Did you get that? Do you see the significance of this? Okay, I hope you do. What this is saying is when the uh, disease, or in this case, the virus infection is kind of rare, only 2% of the people who take the test are actually infected. That's very lopsided, 2 to 98. And in that kind of a situation, okay, in that kind of a situation, even a accurate test is going to create a lots of false positives. That's a false positive number. And so even if you tested positive, because many of those uh, people who tested positive are false positives, the probability that you actually are infected is rather low. And sometimes it is, it is true that this happens even with the most precise and the most accurate of all these uh, testings. All right, so the moral of the story is this, and, and I hope you can see this, you can write this down. We see that 116 people will test positive, but only 18 of them are actually infected. So the conditional probability of being infected, given that you test positive, is only 15.5%. Another way of saying this is uh, the probability that someone who tested positive is actually infected is 15.5%. 1%, I guess I got this wrong here, yeah, this should be a one, right? Uh, much lower than the 90% precision 
uh, on the, of the test. And that's because, you know, this is lopsided, only 2% of the population is infected. Okay, so as I said, this is, uh, this is huge. I consider this table to be one of the most important things for you to see in this course, uh, thus understanding some of the um, easily misunderstood concepts in uh, public health and so on. Okay, so keep this in mind. I am going to ask you a question like this on the quiz, which is right here. When you go to the quiz for section 4.2, make sure you print this out. And this is on the lie detector test, polygraph test. Um, some government jobs may require you to take a polygraph test before you get hired. I have a colleague who had to go into take a lie detector test uh, to teach at a uh, detention center. And so um, how accurate are those things? Uh, they could be 95% accurate, but again, uh, you will do something similar to this on your quiz, okay? Uh, along with some conditional probability questions, make sure you do these on the paper first, and then you can go on to the uh, online quiz for section 4.2. Remember, you have up to three attempts to uh, get a perfect score on these, okay? So, um, Again, I cannot emphasize enough how important this concept is. Um, and this is based on the concept of conditional probability. Next time we'll go into 4.3. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later.